Throughout the engrossing history of public speaking in America, the sermons of ministers, the declamations of statesmen, and the lectures of professional educators, one man and one speech have never been matched in either popularity or influence. The man, Russell H. Conwell, the speech, Acres of Diamonds. A man who was both soldier and teacher, journalist and lawyer, a minister and the founder of Temple University in Philadelphia, Russell H. Conwell led a long, active, and rewarding life. And because of his sincerity, his constant earnestness, and above all, his boundless enthusiasm, he brought inspiration and success into the lives of untold thousands of people who didn't know him personally. More often than not, the focal point of that inspirational influence was the first time a listener heard Acres of Diamonds. Although more than 50 years have passed since Dr. Conwell first presented his dynamic lecture on personal success, the words are just as vibrant and vital today as when they were first spoken. Listen closely. You too will find encouragement, new strength, and enduring truth in Russell H. Conwell's Acres of Diamonds. When going down the Tigris and Euphrates rivers many years ago with a party of English travelers, I found myself under the direction of an old Arab guide whom we hired up at Baghdad. I've often thought how that guide resembled our American barbers in certain mental characteristics. He thought it was not only his duty to guide us down those rivers and do what he was paid for doing, but also to entertain us with stories, curious and weird, ancient and modern, strange and familiar. Many of them I've forgotten, and I'm glad that I have. But there's one I shall never forget. Said he, I will tell you a story now which I reserve for my particular friends. When he emphasized the words particular friends, I listened, and I've ever been glad I did. He told me that there once lived not far from the river Indus an ancient Persian by the name of Ali Hafed. He said that Ali Hafed owned a very large farm, that he had orchards, grain fields, and gardens, and he had money at interest, was a wealthy and contented man. He was contented because he was wealthy, and wealthy because he was contented. One day there visited that old Persian farmer, one of those ancient Buddhist priests, one of the wise men of the East. He sat down by the fire and told the old farmer how this world of ours was made. He said that this world was once a mere bank of fog, and that the Almighty thrust his finger into this bank of fog and began slowly moving his finger around, increasing the speed until at last he whirled this bank of fog into a solid ball of fire. Then it went rolling through the universe, burning its way through other banks of fog, and condensed the moisture without until it fell in floods of rain upon its hot surface and cooled the outer crust. Then the internal fires, bursting outward through the crust, threw up the mountains and the hills, the valleys, the plains and prairies of this wonderful world of ours. If this internal molten mass came bursting out and cooled very quickly, it became granite, less quickly copper, less quickly silver, less quickly gold, and after gold, diamonds were made. Said the old priest, a diamond is a congealed drop of sunlight. Now, that is literally and scientifically true. A diamond is an actual deposit of carbon from the sun. The old priest told Ali Hafed that if he had one diamond the size of his thumb, he could purchase the county. And if he had a mine of diamonds, he could place his children upon thrones through the influence of their great wealth. Ali Hafed heard all about diamonds, how much they were worth, and went to bed that night a poor man. He had not lost anything, but he was poor because he was discontented, and discontented because he feared he was poor. He said, I want a diamond mine, and he lay awake all night. Early in the morning, Ali Hafed sought out the old priest and said, tell me where I can find diamonds. Diamonds? What do you want with diamonds? I wish to be immensely rich. Then why not go and find them? I don't know where to go, said Ali Hafed. The old priest thought a moment, then said, 
find a river that runs through white sands between high mountains. In white sands, you will always find diamonds. So Ali Hafed sold his farm, collected his money, left his family in charge of a neighbor, and away he went in search of diamonds. He began his search, very properly in my mind, in the mountains of the moon. Afterward, he wandered on into Europe, and at last, when his money was all spent and he was in rags, wretchedness, and poverty, he stood on the shore of the Bay of Barcelona in Spain. Then a great tidal wave came rolling in, and the poor, afflicted, and suffering man could not resist the temptation to cast himself into the incoming tide. He sank beneath its foaming crest, never to rise in this life again. Now the man who had purchased Ali Hafed's farm one day led his camel into the garden to drink. And as the camel put its nose into the shallow water of the brook, Ali Hafed's successor noticed a curious flash of light from the white sands of the stream. He pulled out a black stone that had an eye of light that reflected all the hues of the rainbow. He took the pebble into the house, put it on the mantel, and forgot all about it. A few days later, the old priest came to visit Ali Hafed's successor. The moment he opened the farmhouse door, he saw a flash of light on the mantel. He rushed up to it and shouted, Here is a diamond. Has Ali Hafed returned? No, said the farmer. Ali Hafed has not returned, and that is not a diamond. It's just a common stone I found out in the garden. The priest said, I know a diamond when I see one, and this is a diamond. Then together they rushed out into the garden and stirred up the white sands with their fingers, and lo, there came up more beautiful and valuable gems than the first one. This is the story the Arab guide told to me, and friends, it is historically true, for it was in this way that the famous diamond mine of Kalkanda was discovered. It proved to be the most magnificent diamond mine in all the history of mankind. The Kohinoor and Orlef of the crown jewels of England and Russia came from that mine. When the old Arab guide had finished his story, he looked at me silently for a moment and then said, Had Ali Hafed stayed at home and dug in his own cellar, or underneath his own wheat fields, or in his own garden, instead of finding death by starvation and suicide in a strange land, he would have had acres of diamonds. For every acre of his farm, yes, every shovelful afterward, revealed countless gems of fabulous worth. And so it is with all of us. No matter who we are or where we live, there are acres of diamonds, diamonds of opportunity, if we'll just look in our own backyard. Oh, my friends, believe me, the opportunity to get rich, to attain great wealth, is here, now, within the reach of every man and woman who hears me speak. I have come to tell you what in God's sight I believe to be truth. And if the years of my life have been of any value to me in the attainment of common sense, I know I'm right. Never in the history of the world did a poor man without capital have the opportunities to get rich quickly and honestly as he does in our country today. I say it is the truth, and I want you to accept it as such. I have no time to waste in idle talk. Unless some of you get richer for what I'm saying, my time is indeed wasted. I say you ought to get rich, and it's your duty to get rich. If you say you don't have the capital to found a fortune, to acquire great wealth, I say all you need to take the first step toward success is common sense, not copper sense. You may ask, what connection does common sense have with acres of diamonds? It has every connection. Common sense is the map by which you'll find them, the spade by which you'll dig them up, and the knowledge to use them wisely. Where are they? All around you, there are diamonds, unlimited wealth, in the improved practice of your own trade or profession, through additional service to your present customers, friends, and neighbors, in the limitless opportunities of the job you now hold with a company or industry where you're employed today. One of the greatest errors of our day and time is the mistaken idea that change means progress, that changing jobs, changing residents, changing friends, or a change of environment will automatically bring improvement. 
It just isn't true. A few years ago, I knew a young man who changed so much and so consistently that we nicknamed him Changeable Chester. He changed everything as often as possible, jobs, homes, friends, wives, in a never-ending and fruitless search for progress, money, and success. About the only thing Changeable Chester didn't change was himself. Consequently, what he hoped would be an improvement was in reality just substitution. He substituted one short-sighted treadmill for another. Not once did Chester alter his attitude toward his current job or position. He never took off his wishful thinking glasses long enough to investigate the countless opportunities for progress that were all around him. I'm reminded of another illustration about another farmer. This man owned and farmed some land in Pennsylvania. It wasn't a very good farm and he wasn't very successful. But he was not the kind of man to make hasty decisions. He wasn't going to sell his farm and change his occupation until he had something else to do. He wrote a letter to his brother in Canada who was in oil and asked for a job. His brother replied, learn something about oil and I'll give you a job. So the man began to study oil and he studied hard. He learned how oil was formed and how it was taken from the earth. A year later, he wrote his brother again and said, I know oil. His brother wrote back and said, all right, come on, the job's waiting. So this careful and deliberate man sold his worn out farm and went to Canada. Less than a week later, the farmer who had purchased the place experienced some trouble watering his stock. The cattle wouldn't put their noses into a small freshwater stream because it was covered with a thick scum that smelled like coal oil. As you probably guessed, there's no longer a farm on that property. It's now a town called Titusville, Pennsylvania, the origin and the beginning of the giant oil industry in the United States. The man who sold it had been surrounded by literally millions and millions of liquid diamonds. I need one more illustration. This particular young man was a friend of mine. He attended Yale University where he graduated with a degree in engineering. He was in fact a highly skilled mining engineer. His competence in that field was confirmed by the fact that the university offered him a job as an instructor. But as he told his mother, why should I become a teacher at a small salary when a man with my knowledge can go out into the world and discover valuable ore deposits? His mother agreed with him at least with a part about the possessing great knowledge. But there was no money available to take long journeys throughout the world. The only possible solution was to sell the little Vermont farm where they lived. So that's what they did. They left New England and I haven't heard anything about the young mining engineer from that day to this. I don't know what became of him, but I do know that the man who purchased his mother's farm discovered a priceless load of pure silver in the land. The first time, incidentally, that silver has ever been discovered in the rocky hills of Vermont. The young man had the knowledge to recognize acres of diamonds all around him, but he refused to look for them close to home. You may ask, how do these illustrations apply to me in my business? Where is my acre of diamonds? It's within yourself and it is measured by an ever widening circle with you as the center. You'll find your acres of diamonds within yourself, within your family, within your neighborhood, within your own job, within your community, town or city, within your own county, state and country. We need to change attitudes, not locations or vocations. If we are to be great, we must first be great to ourselves and to those who know us best. True success means humility, fear of God, and love for our fellow man. Believe me, the opportunities are all around you. There are acres of diamonds in your own backyard if you will but search and find them.